Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul and in this Red Gaming Tentacom video, that's right, I'm actually back, sort of. It's going to be a shorter video than normal because I'm still suffering from the effects of my plague, which was pretty much a full-blown flu for the last week, which has been pretty, very unpleasant, actually. I was going to say pretty unpleasant, but that would be, that would be underselling it. It was extremely unpleasant, and, uh... Yeah, so hopefully I'm somewhat back into the race. So this is going to be a shorter video than normal. And hopefully I'm understandable because... Yeah, I pretty much was speaking in tongues at some point with how blocked up I was. So hopefully the, the demons of the virus have left me. Anyway, this is also an article just in case you can't understand some of what I'm saying. Because I still am pretty damn nasally. And that is available in the video description. And there's going to be a lot of pausing in this because I'm still going to be drinking water every 32 seconds. And if you've never watched my videos before, well, hi, how are you doing? Anyway, so the GTX 1050 Thai specifications and benchmarks have leaked out onto the internet. So what does that mean? Well, for a start, this card operates without a PCIe power Molex. And this makes the card very interesting for folks because at around 130 to let's say 160 US dollars has not been an official price point yet. But we can assume cards are going to probably be within about that price budget. This card does roughly perform on par with the GTX 960. I say roughly because it actually slightly beats out, um, at least in the 3D Mark benchmarks we're seeing. So this card is essentially the entry level Pascal experience. It's going to make do with just 768 CUDA cores, which operate at 1291 MHz, but boost up to 1392, which is pretty paltry if you compare it to, let's say, the GTX 1070 or 1080, but still is a nice bonus over the previous Maxwell Silicon. You might, if you're pretty familiar with the Pascal architecture, be scratching your head. The ROP count is most likely correct at 32. However, the TMU count is most likely incorrect. What's probably happening here is that the... Uh, GPU-Z is not properly recognized in the card and therefore is incorrectly recognizing the total number of TMUs and therefore the total is probably 48. In case you're wondering how I get to that number, I have re-explained it in the article, but essentially it has 768 shaders or CUDA cores in this GPU as we know and therefore there are 128 uh, CUDA cores per SM in the Pascal architecture, so you take 768, divide that by 128, that gives you 6, 6 times 8, because there are 8 TMUs per um, SM, so 6 times 8 equals 48. Hopefully that made sense, if not, it is in the article. Anyway, now, the GTX 1050 Ti does, of course, feature 4GB of memory, because I think NVIDIA would get raked over coals at this point if they did not, even at a lower slash entry level GPU, but it does so with just GDDR5 RAM operating, operating excuse me, good old nose, at just 1752MHz, and it combines this with a pretty paltry 128-bit memory bus. I can't criticise it too much because it's exactly the same memory bus width as a lot of GPUs at this uh, kind of range have to go with, including the RX 460, but obviously this does really squeeze down the memory bandwidth to just 112 gigabytes per second. So what about the performance? Because at the end of the day, specs don't matter, it's what the card can actually do. Well, 10,054 if you are dealing with performance setting of 3 Mark 2011 and finally the extreme setting is 3867 which as I mentioned a few moments ago just slightly pips the GTX 960 to the post. Honestly speaking this is not going to be a replacement for the GTX 960 what it will do however is provide a nice entry level uh, pathway into the Pascal GPU and for those who are looking for like a streaming GPU, light gaming, small form factor, those type of uh, criteria, it's absolutely going to probably tick all the right boxes. There are a couple of spanners in the works. A. How much is it going to cost when it's finally announced? B. How is it going to stack up against the RX 460 and the RX 470, especially if AMD managed a couple of price cuts, which they may not? And, well, the final one is that if you've got already a pretty decent-ish card, it's not going to be a particularly big upgrade, unless you're coming from something along the lines of a GTX 750 Ti. Anyway, hopefully you're enjoying the video. I'm going to get going, as I said. I'm still recovering. Hopefully then over the next couple of days or so, I'll be back to normal. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.